Well, hi class. We're getting ready for our next nature walk, which is going to be aquatic ecosystem study. So let's look at some of the tools we have to use for our aquatic ecosystem study here in the desert. Okay. First thing we're going to look at is this little disc right here. It's called a nephilometer. It's used to uh, determine the turbidity or the cloudiness of the water or how far down the water you can see. We've got a large fish trap here. We've got our measuring stick we're going to take it with us. We've got our insect net. We've got a crawdad trap here, a little fish trap, a smaller fish trap and a crawdad trap. And we've got a fish net. This works really nice. And we've got these long poles. See this has got a net on the end of it? Long pole. It can be extended about 15 feet. And we've got another long pole here with a collecting bottle on the end of it. These are all going to be used to be making collections at our aquatic ecosystem study. So let's get going. Okay, here's our primary study area. It's just a drain ditch here in the Imperial Valley. Drop right there. And we got a string across here. You can see the string going across. We're going to use that to make our profile for our study area here. Here's another look at the study area. We got some background noise there from the from the water. This is a, a pretty good area to study. Uh, we have a lot of sign here of coyotes using this uh, little platform right across here, the concrete platform to come across. The river bottoms over that way, about a half a mile. Uh, we have coyote droppings over there, and we have the coyote uh, tracks right here in this area. There goes a the fist trap. Drop it down in here. I'm gonna come back in a couple days. Okay, you can see the rope, the green rope coming up to here to our stake right here. We got it tied to a post down there and, and we got it right here. Oh, we're gonna put this little note on it here. Hopefully people will leave us alone. We've never had a problem before. Just since we got here, we got a gopher that's been working right here. You can see the new dirt. Uh, so we got a gopher in our little aquatic ecosystem. Okay, we got uh, our uh, our crawdad traps, or benthic uh, organism traps. It might catch a minnow or two in there too. Uh, and we're gonna we're just gonna throw a little uh, Foster Farms chicken in here, a little frozen vegetables, uh, just something to attract them. We'll close them up. We're just gonna drop them in here. Well, these traps need to be baited. The fish trap does not need to be baited. We're just gonna lower them down in here and and uh, come back in a couple of days. See what we got. Okay, this would also be uh, part of our aquatic ecosystem. We got a pelican over here, a coumarant right here, and some other coumarants right over that area. Okay, this area has it's full of birds. Some, uh, we'll try to get a picture of the pelicans feeding for you. Here we go, decomposition. Think about the cycles that we studied. Well, we got our uh, basic uh, trap set out. And uh, the purpose of those is so we can see uh, what's actually down under the water. And, and of course, everything we get, it's going to be live catch and it's going to be catch and release. So everything's set up. We need to go into the, into the lab and we need to do a little bit of uh, drawing to get our diagram down or our profile of our study area. So that's the next step. Okay, here's a graph of our study area. And remember the string goes across the, the uh, area. We're going to use that. Our study area is approximately 30 meters across and we're going to make a profile. Okay, you can see we've got the surface of the water here. We've got the profile. This is from taking readings as we go across with our tape mix. We'll show you how to do that. Okay, we're moving right along. We've got the zones. Now we need to grab the plants for the present. Looks like we're coming along pretty good. This right here is, uh, I believe, uh, called curly dock. This is cane over here. And there's other little tiny plants right down here on the edges of the water. Okay, so there's our profile. We've got our, our uh, edges of the dirt in our field here. We've got the little zone. Fundal zone, that's out in the middle, and the benthic zone. We'll be taking samples from each one, and also we'll be taking samples from here. And we're here, so we got a little more uh, diagramming to do here. Okay, we've added in the uh, aphotic zone, or the area where there's no light reaches the foliage zone, the area which has light. And when we use our uh, our uh, nephematic uh, disk, we'll be able to see what the depth of the light goes to. It makes a difference what organisms we're And of course, in this ecosystem, the depth of the water varies. So these organisms on the sides are going to have to adapt to rise and lower uh, levels of water. What we have here are definitely raccoon tracks made right after the rain that we had. Okay, class, one, one way that we can document what we find is by making cast of footprints. So let's show you how we do that. 
What we have here is some plaster of Paris. We got a little cup with some water and a ring right here we made out of a plastic container. And we're gonna mix some up. Okay, we take a little water and pour it into our container. Now we're gonna start adding the plaster of Paris, okay? Try not to make a mess in my car. Okay, we just about got it all mixed up here. We're gonna go find our footprint. We're gonna pour it in it and we'll have a cast. Okay, we've got our footprint here. This is the raccoon footprint. We're gonna put our little ring around here and we're gonna pour our, our uh, plaster of Paris in there. Okay, you can see what we got. We got our, uh, our little ring there with it. Got a rock on top so it won't leak around the edges. And we're just gonna wait for it to harden up. In class, we want to look at our results of our cast that we made. This is the raccoon track. You notice it looks a lot like just a human hand. Uh, raccoons are very good at manipulating things with their hands. We also That was the one we saw close to our study area. We had a raccoon, or not a raccoon, but a coyote imprint. Here's another coyote imprint. It didn't come out as well. This one came out pretty good. And then, believe it or not, not far from our study, we had a deer uh, track. And these were all made after the, the rain last time. So we've got deer, coyote, raccoon in our area. Out here looking for uh, things around our pond study area. Look what we got. Yeah, how about that? Huge gopher snake. Down you go, Snakey. There's something that you don't see too often. But we do have them in the Imperial Valley. Very good uh, example of a boat tail grackle. When they fly their tail, uh, shaped like a boat. Let's see if we can get him to take off for us. You see what we got here? Yeah. Got a turtle right there. Okay, one of the things that we do find is these little uh, gambuzi or gambizi uh, minnows found everywhere in the Imperial Valley. I'm gonna let this little guy go. Yeah, out there on the end of the pole on the sandbar here, can you see those tracks there? Yep, the raccoon tracks. So the raccoon's been down in here feeding on crawdads and minnows and things during the evening or night. Okay, off the bottom, we got some benthic uh, feeders here, and let's see if we can fish one of them out of here. A couple of rocks. There we go. This one right here is small, but it's a clam. It's a freshwater clam that we find in the canals and drain ditches in the Imperial Valley. It's a benthic organism. It lives in the mud at the bottom. A filter feeder. Here's a couple of clams, benthic organisms. They live in the sand at the bottom. That's where we got them down at the bottom of this uh, ditch in the sand. They are filter feeders, freshwater clams. Bivalves. All right, here's our study area. It looks a little different today. When we came the first time, the water was very turbulent because it had just rained. We're going to be checking it out today a little bit. We've got a, a few more toys here to work with. We've, we've attached our turbidity disc to this pole here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take it. We're going to drop it down into the water. We're going to count, or we're going to check when, it, when we can no longer see it. Then we will know uh, how to tell how, the clarity of the water. So we're going to drop it down in here. And you see it disappeared right about there. 
I'm going to take it out of the water. That's about 18 inches of clarity. Okay, we have our water sample here. We're just going to dip our pH paper in there and take it out. We're going to compare it and you can see it's pretty close to 6. So the pH of our study area is 6. Okay. And we're going to take the thermometer, we're going to lower it down in the water. we got a long string of uh, twine attached to it. We're going to take the temperature of our water. Sample pole here. And uh, while we take the temperature, we're going to take samples from the littoral zone, which is right here on the edge. The pelagic zone out here in the middle and the benthic zone on the bottom. And we're going to put them in little, so there's a little, get a little sample off the bottom here. To see what, what we get. Okay. And it looks like mud, and that's probably what we would expect off the bottom. Well, we're going to take uh, samples. The littoral zone, the pelagic zone out in the middle, or prefundal, and the bottom, the benthic zone. Okay, we have our sample with the uh, our sample rod here with the sample on the end of it. We're going to take some samples. We're going to take a sample from the littoral zone, which is right here on the side. The profundal, which is out here in the middle, and the benthic zone, which is on the very bottom. So we're just going to scoop it along the bottom here and pull it out. And you can see it looks mostly like mud and dirt, which is what we would expect on the bottom. But we're going to take it back to the lab and we're going to see what we have collected in there. So we're going to take these three samples here. Test area, we're going to get some boots on here, some water boots so we don't get our feet all wet I hope and we'll see what we collect we're down in our creek right now or the canal and we want to first look at these organisms right here here we've got a clam it's dead it's opened up it's a bivalve that means it has two sides to it and these are filter feeders they live on the bottom they live in the sand here's one now these might have been cleaned out by a a a, a raccoon or something like that down here let's see what else we can find I almost got stuck over there I almost <laughs> I was up to almost the top of my boots in mud so thankfully I got out of there we want to go right out there if we can let's see what we get now we're going to take this uh, screen all it is is a paper holder that you might see on one of your teacher's desk and we're going to go like this with it we're going to put it down the water and we're going to work it forward like this and anything we disturb is going to come up to the surface. So that's what we're going to be looking for right now, anything we can find right here. So we found the big clams, but what we're looking for is right over here. Now if you look carefully you can see something moving right there there you go that is probably a, a dragonfly nymph here's another one right over here these are a major part of the food chain let's kind of wash this off a little bit more there we go now you got a good look at it right there major part of the food chain these are found uh, when you when you look for these you have to turn over rocks and let the water wash into your screen and and all of these are aquatic insects that means they lay their eggs in the water and the nymph or the baby insect uh, develops in the water so they all have gills we're gonna throw them back in there very good uh, food for very good food for uh, the fish that are in the water and the minnows so we're gonna shake this out here and, and let all these little there's a lot of them in here we're gonna let them go back well we got out of the out of the hole i thought i was gonna have to call a tow truck to get me out of there for a while but we made it and so it's on to a couple other experiments all of these experiments would have been done in class had you all been there down here in the mud you can 
can see signs, tracks. Now these aren't raccoon tracks, although there are some over there, but these are the tracks of egrets and blue herons, which we do have in our area. Quite a few of them. They're all along this little muddy sandbar right here, which I don't want to get down into. I almost got uh, stuck in that other sandbar. But they eat the same thing that raccoons do, so they're in competition. You notice that these little, there looks like they're little balls on top of the surface right, let's see if I can show you, right, right there on top of the surface. See those little balls are all over in this area right here. Those are probably from worms that are down in the, uh, in the mud there that have crawled out to either that or they're from um, the, the clams that we saw, but I think they're from worms. I want to point something out to you. See right over here in this area, see that round, in the mud, that round uh, looks like a hole. That is a crawdad den, if you want to call it. But the crawdads will burrow down in the bank. When it's dry, they'll burrow down in there and they'll plug that hole with mud. So they have a little wet spot down in there to hang out into till the water comes back. So we know there's crawdads. And this net uh, brought us quite a few little minnows. These are called pot belly minnows, obviously, because they have a pot belly. Gambuzi. These are uh, very, uh, uh, there's probably like second on the food chain. They eat plankton, they eat uh, zooplankton, whatever they can get a hold of. Got quite a few of them in this little spot right here. Okay, so we're going to lure them down here. We're going to see if they want to go back home. But we came up with quite a few of those little critters right there. One of the other things we do is we use an insect net, this insect net right here, and we do sweeps to collect insects in our study area. Now, uh, this is what they look right here. We got my hand right here. It's a big, it's got a handle on about three feet long, and you just sweep it back and forth like this through the plants, collecting your insects. And we gather up the, uh, the net like this and we're going to take a peek in here they're going to be flying out as soon as we open this we're going to open it toward the window but down in there you can you probably can't see them but i see a ladybug down in there a wasp those are uh consumers secondary consumers they're gonna we're gonna turn this thing inside out and and when we start working this back out you are going to see the insects and Okay, there's a spider right there. Spider would be a consumer. You have that little bug right there. Looks like a little wasp. Consumer. And down further, we have a, thousands of little green uh, bugs. Those are aphids. And the aphids are like blood suckers on plants. They would be primary consumers, and these other organisms would be feeding on them. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, a lot of aphids in that little study area right there. Okay, we got our slide, our sample from the very bottom of the centrifuge tube. You all remember how to make a slide. We're just going to put. Two small drops right there, and see what we got. So you can see with the uh, <clears throat> aid of our microscope that Mr. Derma got for us with the camera on top, we can see things on our screen. We can look at our samples. Uh, quite obviously, the littoral zone is going to have the most living things in it because it has... Uh, green stuff, which is carrying out cooked photosynthesis, food supply.
And we have a snail here. This is from the littoral zone also. Snails uh, eat algae. Okay, we've got our profile done. We've got our survey done. There's a list of the flora and fauna, zoophytoplankton, zooplankton, phytoplankton, microscopic uh, uh, plants that carry out photosynthesis, zooplankton, microscopic uh, animals. We're ready to make our food web. That's going to be your assignment. Well, class, you might recognize uh, where we are. Yes, we're back in our beloved classroom. I know you miss it. Anyway, that is our aquatic ecosystem study. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, you can go out and take collections. You can analyze them. You can try to develop food chains from them, uh, food webs. And of all the things we collected, I'm sure we barely scratched the surface of what could be found. But again, we're just taking samples and making collections. And you'll be using this for your uh, write-up of the aquatic ecosystem for this packet. We'll be talking about it on Zoom, so make sure you're there. Love you. Take care.